to, to foresee these things mm -hmm. because we didn't foresee it. Okay. He was a very quiet, very hardworking fellow, uh, but apparently he was devastated by what had happened to him. And, you know, as, as our company usually does, they, they ignored what happened and never addressed it. How do you do that? I mean, I'm sure employees have questions. Hmm. Uh, we've, we've had employees die in the aisles. Oh, yes. And they haven't wow. addressed it. So and what they, happened? I mean, how'd they handle that? They threw a sheet over them, but yet kept the place open. No way. What? They did not shut down at all. No. Uh, what, what aisle was this on? Six. Six. Great number. Oh, my God. Mr. Love, uh, going back to that story, I believe he did not kill the children though. No, he did not kill the children. Not. No. He left the children alone. He was saying enough. He okay. he he took yeah, I, I I'm sorry if I didn't clarify that. He did not kill the children. He killed his baby mama and her girlfriend and himself. Man, the community is hurting, man. People are people are going through things that they feel they have no solution for. And they're taking extreme measures, man. I don't like that. Like I would be the type of person that if I could if I could talk to these people before they made these decisions, I know it's not realistic. But just if I could, if I had that power to talk to these people before they made these decisions, like, man, what? Because I understand. I, I've had bad days, but not that bad. You know what, gentlemen? I believe you both recall, and I'll just throw myself out there a little bit. I, too, have, I won't say that word, baby mom, I hate that. Um, I have a child with somebody I do not get along with. In a way, I can understand the restraint it takes and how you can lose a bit of sanity. And I've spoke to these two gentlemen many times. And they've actually had to calm me down. Not saying, I mean, Lord knows what could happen. But it does take a lot of restraint, especially when children are involved. But yeah, it really gets to you. And you can, I see the possibility of people losing it just from that simple situation. And if, and if Wolf is telling us, let me tell you something about Wolf. He is a very even-tempered person for the most part. He is a very, very straightforward person. So if he's getting that upset, if he's even contemplating the thought, there is something completely wrong with the situation. And I'm not talking about on his end. We got to stop in these relationships, man. You got to stop not realizing that there's another person involved. You can't not care so much to the point to where only your feelings matter. I understand you're hurt. I understand things happen that don't work out in your favor. It happens to me all the time. But you got to be bigger than that, man. We are adults. Life is not easy. It's not simple. But that does not give you a right to just, to just lash out. Because if we all lashed out like that, where would we be at? So I'm calling out anybody who's having these thoughts, man. Anybody who's having problems in their relationship or issues, thinking about what's going on. Come talk to us, man. I, I will gladly have you on the show. And you can explain your situation in entirety. And we will give you the best advice we possibly can. None of us are doctors. None of us are, are certified in any departments. But we live, we've been through life. Exactly. Everybody's been through situations. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lou's been on this earth for a, a lot longer than me and Wolf. So I'm sure he's seen and heard things even, even more to an extent than what we have. That's knowledge. That's wisdom. That's the problem. People don't like to talk about their issues anymore. Everybody likes to keep it behind closed doors. Until something happens. Exactly. Until the police are called. And then it's too late. Talk to us, man. Let me tell y'all right now. Truthbetoldpod.com, we are here for y'all. We are realists. We enjoy talking to y'all. We enjoy having a good time. But if it's something serious, trust me. We know when and when not to. If you need an avenue to just talk. Some people just need to vent. Some exactly. people, just, they don't have anybody to talk to. I'm going to tell you right now. If you need to talk, you can email me. You can check out the show. You can hit us up on the show page. Any of those avenues are perfect for us, man, because this has to it has to stop, man. It's not okay. Boom. And the more people see it, like kids, think about the kids in these situations. Yes. What who's talking to them? Who's letting them know, okay, dad made a bad decision. You know? It gotta stop somewhere, man. It has to stop yeah. somewhere. Well that begins with as I tell my children, the the two children that have their own children, that uh their their decision making has to be based primarily on the children first but when the children don't come first and you're constantly bickering and you know the fighting I, I had a I had a younger friend who constantly fought with his wife in front of his children and I pointed it out to him one day I said 
why are you fighting in front of them? And he, he had a quizzical look on his face, like it never occurred to him uh, that they were fighting in front of the children. I said, well, let's put, let's put ourselves in their place. The two of you are the most important people in their lives. They're, they're the, you're the two people that they love the most. And the two of you are fighting. So basically, when you're a child and something like that happens, the first impulse is, oh, it's never going to be the same again. My life is, is over. It's, my whole world is collapsing around me. And they go to that extreme. And if you don't, if you don't deal with that with them, they'll, they'll go there. And they'll, they'll, they'll immerse themselves in their misery rather than they won't feel protected anymore. So I, I told him, just take it somewhere else. Take it in the bedroom. Bring down the volume and start talking to each other, right? Talking, talking about what's going on rather than talking at each other. And keep the kids out of it. The other side of the, another thing that you were talking about is a lot of people don't want to bring out their business out into the you know into the general public because we we live on status a lot of people riding around in beautiful cars and they can't pay their mortgage uh, who have beautiful clothes on and jewelry and bling bling but they're broke mm -hmm. so they they want to give the impression that they're perfect everything is wonderful life is good and really it isn't and they don't know how to reach out for help they don't know how to ask for help and this 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 used to happen back in the day you know in those days it was it was a pride thing you know i'm not i don't i i don't need to go especially in in and, and i hate to break it down like this but in in the black and the spanish community if you're known to have been going to therapy or seeing a psychiatrist. You were nuts. Plain and simple. So people didn't, you didn't advertise that. You didn't tell people that you were having difficulties in your marriage. When you saw everybody, you played nice. And you gave the impression that everything was fine. And then after they left, you beat the shit out of each other. So it's, it's kind of... A continuation on that and frankly we haven't we haven't improved on it much yeah. especially the fact that a lot of our women are raising our children alone mm. that doesn't help so there you go I mean it's 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 not the happiest uh, prognosis but it's it's the truth and we have to deal with it that's part why I, I wanted to do the show to point these things out and maybe to give people a chance to, you know, like you said, get it out and feel better about, you know, that they're not alone. Yeah. That's the most important yeah. part. But well, we're going to do better, man. And like I, like I said, I can't reiterate it enough. If you need to talk, we're here to talk. Or you can reach out to any of us. You can look us all up on every social media site. You can find us together as a group. You can find us individually. But if you need to talk, man... Get it out, man. We're going we're gonna to move on because I don't want to bring down everybody's mood, but we have to deal with these issues. They, they have to be discussed. Um, and we have the NBA playoffs going on right now. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna switch gears a little bit. Uh, Lou, tell us about uh, the latest what's going on in these NBA playoffs. Man, they've been kind of aggressive. Aggressive and kind of strange. The injuries are playing a big part of it. Okay. And it's being blamed on the condensed schedule. Condensed schedule, yeah. Charles Barkley came out and talked about how, how when you're playing two or three, when you're playing three games in a row on three consecutive days, you're going to be you you're going to be tired, right. and your body is going to break down. Absolutely. Uh, in the case of Derrick Rose, it was his ACL. He, was a, he tore his ACL a few days ago. Now he's out of the playoffs. Uh. That's big. The same occurred to Iman Shumpert of the Knicks. Both of them had the same injury? Tore his ACL. He's out for the season six to eight months. Man. And we're just trying to 
to you know to get a sense of what's happening right truth be told we're just talking about everything right now i think one of my one of my wife's uh students asked her whether you know it was true that catholics ate their children what what and it was a serious question it was a serious question I I guess that's I that's guess the type of world we live in. Yeah. People are wow extremely ignorant. I told I, I told them she, you should have told them you know we tried but you know we didn't have enough uh, salt and pepper that day. <laughs> Meat's kind of tough. And we threw a little sasson. A little sasson. <laughs> yeah. um, it just didn't taste right. What is wrong with some of you people out here, man? Even for me, I was brought up in the church was at church two, three times a week. And I, I am religious, and I still do go to church, but I'm not as regular, half as regular as I used to be. Mm -hmm. Because there's been churches that I visited, and I'm like, did I just join a gang? Like, what? <laughs> you know, I mean, from day one, I remember I went and visited a church, and they want your W-2. Excuse me? And I instantly was like, what? He said, it's tax season, so we need all of our members to submit all your paperwork. And I was just sitting there like, what paperwork? You know, we want your W 2s. We want to make sure that you're being honest with the Lord. Oh my God. So the Lord doesn't know how much you make yet. The Lord has to look at your. Yeah, they want to make sure you're being honest with the Lord. It's a system of checks and balances. So if you can say you don't got it, they're going to be like, well, we looked at your. Well, plus, don't forget the tie system. Yeah. You, you, you got to come up with that 10%. 10% and then a gift. The car hasn't paid off yet? Nope. Seriously. Yeah, that always kills me now. You know, the 10% is what you owe the Lord. Then you got to give him a gift. <laughs> so even, all right. Yeah. That's how you know. Uh, but you know what? I've, I've visited a lot of churches for that reason. Mm -hmm. As soon as I hear stuff like that, I'm like, oh, you ready to go? Mm -hmm. <laughs> when we just talk about everything that's going up, even the Lord is raising his prices. Even, even yes. the Lord <laughs> is taxed. Yes. He said, y'all wow. been cutting up too much. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need back to Annie. <laughs> the Lord <laughs> needs his cut, too. That's a shame. Yeah. Mm. It can't be a mega church without money. Oh, yeah. New birth isn't going to exist without donations. Well, you know what? Back um, when I was, we didn't even call it church, but I'll just say in general, right? But when, there was, when I was going to church, we had it sometimes in someone's basement. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was never anything fancy. It's just a place to worship. To worship. Don't have to it's have not about the building. No. no. Yeah, it's not about the green screen. Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> so in, some of my churches I went to, we were like in high school, in auditoriums. Yes. I've been in hotel conference rooms. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, I got some really, I got a lot out of those churches. Definitely. It, I wasn't lacking anything to make a church have. Mm -hmm. It was actually better because it was a close-knit church. Right. Everybody had a common goal. Everybody was building. And the church grew. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It developed. But you had to start somewhere. And that's how they started back in the day. You know, and you go way back in the history with slaves. They would meet. They would have to meet after the, the master went to sleep. Secrecy. Absolutely. And it's the exact opposite now. Mm. It's, it's, it's a business. Well, and, and frankly, it's always been a business when you really think about it. Yeah. I mean... The idea, when I first heard about the Thai system, I was I was I was so interested in it because I'd never heard of it. Ten percent. And I was like, really? It's a big chunk of the chunk Lord chunk. wants let me get this straight. The Lord wants you. Now now is the Lord's name on the on the bank account? Because if Jesus wants to withdraw any money, he's gonna have to have his name 